uh, between public works planning and, and the developer. So it is, it is quite different and maybe something that your policy didn't uh, anticipate. The process that will happen here, we've applied for draft plan approval. That was about 14 months ago. We're hoping to come to you in a couple of weeks with that application for draft plan approval and hopefully we'll get draft plan approval then. Uh, because this, this McCool Street is within the land to be developed, your former county manager, Keith Robichaud, actually signed the application for plan of subdivision on behalf of Norfolk County because you are one of the landowners. We have made, again, about a year ago, this application to close McCool Street. Assuming it gets closed, regardless of it's whether we pay money or don't pay money or how that happens, regardless of that, that McCool Street gets absorbed into the developer's land. The developer builds the subdivision, puts in the sewers, the roads, the street lights, the sidewalks, plants the trees, builds the storm one, does all that, and then at the end, and then registers the subdivision. When he registers the subdivision, the, la the lands which form the road allowances go back to the municipality. There's no money that comes to the developer for that. Those road allowances simply are transferred automatically when the plan is registered as public roads back to Norfolk County. Now on the, in the report that's in front of you, if you refer to that on page two of the staff report, the very, very bottom of page two, two lines up from the bottom, or actually the last paragraph, it says that Mr. Valley and his deputation made reference to the developer granting the roads within the subdivision back to the municipality and could not understand why they need to buy them from the municipality only to grant them back. Staff advised that this is not the case. I had a quite a chat with Lydia Harrison yesterday, and I think what we're talking about here is a little bit of semantics. What we do agree on, what Lydia and I do agree on, is that when the plan of subdivision is registered, those lands will go back to Norfolk County, and the developer doesn't get any money back from Norfolk County for that. So when I was here last time, I used the word give. The developer will give the land back to Norfolk County, and sure enough, that is exactly what happens. And I believe if, when you ask Lydia, she'll give you that same answer, that the lands do go back to Norfolk County. The developer doesn't get any money for those lands, even though he had to buy some of those same lands from Norfolk County. So that's where the difference is. We think that it's somewhat odd to buy land from you in order to turn around and give that same land back. The common sense approach says that if you sell me a car, you wouldn't expect me to give it back to you a month later. If that's a business I can get in, sign me up. <laughs> so what we're asking you for today is in the staff report, on page three of the staff report, there are two, four, I'm sorry, four options. Option one is to do what your standard protocol says and it's been laid out by staff. Uh, we pay $37,500 for the land. Obviously, we don't like that or we wouldn't be here. Option two is that uh, the road be closed and deeded to our client at a valuation to be determined by council. That obviously has some interest and would seem to me to suggest that there would be some compromise between the zero dollar that we're looking for and the 37.5. And the option three is that we do the same thing uh, and that we pay nominal consideration, which I'm assuming is a dollar or something like that. So either option two or three is definitely the direction that we want to go. Um, again, this is something that's not completely unique. It has happened before in Norfolk County, um, but it's not something that was likely considered when your policy was written and you established the dollars per acre and the, and the closing process. So I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. You've heard from me twice on this matter. I would ask that if you have any comments or questions that you ask them now, because once the chair dismisses me and I go back down and sit over there, then if you raise some new topics, I, I can't participate in that discussion. Um, and so it would be helpful to me to be able to clarify anything that you may have as questions. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, I have some questions. Councillor Black. So Chairman, thank you very much through you to John. And John, somehow you're linking the, the two issues in my mind that are totally separate issues but um, you're suggesting that 
uh, it sounds to me like this subdivision is the only subdivision that gives land back. But don't all subdivisions, no matter what they are, give land back? They have to dedicate the roads? Doesn't matter what subdivision it is in Ontario, isn't it not the same? Through the chair, yes, all subdivisions do give land back. Okay, Abs that's it. Thank you. A absolutely. Our counter to that would be not all subdivisions buy road from the municipality to then give it back. The but same it, but that's back. a totally separate issue. So to me, it's like, well, I got a, a piece of land. I, can, I should give it to anybody then. Give it free to anybody. Why should we give it free to you? I suppose give it free to me because I'm going to give it free back to you. <laughs> you're good, you're, but your developer is going to make all kinds of money. And if they don't have that, no. they can't develop. I have Councillor Sonnenberg, Councillor Height, and Councillor Brunton. So Councillor Sonnenberg. Thank you. John, how long has this unopened piece of McCool Street been on the records, sitting there doing absolutely nothing? Do you know? I, I, I don't have that information, but several decades. I would think, yeah. Yeah. Maybe more than decades. It could be 100 years that it's been sitting there doing nothing. Thank you. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, Mr. Valley. Uh, how many homes will be built in this new subdivision? Uh, I don't have that exact number. It's around 100. Around 100. And do you know approximately what the development fees per house would be? I'm looking over. I don't see anyone from public work or, sorry, from planning here, but I believe the development charges are in the neighborhood of about $10,000 per lot. So th there's a substantial... Sorry. 13500 per per home. There's a substantial amount of money on the table right now over this development. Oh, absolutely. Councillor Brunton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're going to like this, John. I got a great idea. We won't charge you for McCool, but you don't give us back the new streets and just look after everything. How's that? <laughs> 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 My question uh, is really, does that... McCool Street line up, and I remember seeing your drawings uh, with Charles Street eventually. Has it come around somehow? I, I, I do recall you had a map here with... Yeah, so there's... Um, you know, the way, the way the plan of subdivision works is there's a road almost in the same place as McCool Street. It's just offset, so in one place it's to the east, one place is to the west of, of the existing McCool. Um, but basically, Charles Street comes in and it forms a complete loop around and goes back out to Charles again. Okay. I wasn't sure how that worked. And is there, uh, was there any other streets involved there? As like, far as connection? Yeah. No, it's just Charles. Okay. Thank you. That's it, I guess. I haven't got any more speakers. Thank you very much, John. And uh, I need someone to move the uh, deputation as information. Mayor, Mayor Luke, all those in favor? That is carried. Uh, I guess we are going to staff with this. Let me find the right thing here that I need. Yes, okay. Lydia, I guess you're the one taking this. Mr. Chairman, staff report EBS 1726 was presented and submitted, uh, was prepared and submitted for the April 18th, 2017 Council and Committee meeting. Through his deputation, Mr. Valley of G. Douglas Valley Limited presented new information to Council that was not previously outlined or identified in the original request to Corporate Support Services. Staff respect, respectfully requested that the report be deferred until the new information presented could be reviewed and appropriate options be presented to Council. The purpose of this report is to provide Council with some options to consider regarding the, quest, the request of Mr. Valley through his deputation. Roy Group, Spatifora Inc., Kent Dixon, and Mark Dixon are the owners of multiple parcels of land surrounding an unopened portion of McCool Street, Waterford, as shown on the map attached to this report. Their request for closure and conveyance of the unopened portion of McCool Street is to allow for the development of a plan of subdivision for residential purposes. Mr. Valley, as part of his deputation to Council on April 18th, circulated to Council and staff a draft plan of subdivision. 
this draft plan of subdivision had not been previously provided to staff by Mr. Higgins. The draft plan highlighted a section of McCool Street in question, as well as the proposed roadways within the subdivision development. Mr. Valley, through his deputation, advised that the developers are proposing a land swap as they are struggling to understand why they must purchase the portion of McCool Street only to have to give it back to the municipality as a part of the proposed roadways within the subdivision development. On review of the draft plan of subdivision uh, provided by Mr. Valley, a significant portion of McCool Street is required to make up portions of seven lots and two, plot, and two blocks on the plan. Staff advised that the streets, as shown on the plan of subdivision, are dedicated as public highways when the plan of subdivision is registered on title. And under Section 30 of the Municipal Act, the municipality then becomes the owner. This is the case for all plans of sub subdivision that are registered, registered. Normally, no monies are paid to the developer for streets. However, the municipality's own ownership of the streets comes with all the associated costs for the streets, including maintenance, repair, improvements, lighting, snow removal, and liability, thus relinquishing the developer from any future responsibility for these streets. Mr. Valley's proposal of a land swap, in effect, attaches a valuation to the street shown on the proposed plan of subdivision. And so in effect, the streets will not be given to the municipality, as Mr. Valley has previously stated. Staff have provided Council with four options for consideration, and it is staff's recommendation for approval of option number one, so that the sale and the closure of McCool Street remains consistent with County Policy EBS 22, Permanent Road Allowances, Lanes and Alleys Closure, and avoids the setting of precedents relating to the future sales of portions of roads, lanes and alleys, and future subdivision applications. With that, staff will answer questions from Council. Thank you. Councillor Black. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And a question for you, probably more appropriate to the our, our new treasurer sitting over there working away, but or maybe the county manager or any staff member. But, you know, I'm always, uh, different people are always say to me, oh, you know, you're going to make all kinds of money with this development. You know, you can put that into the coffers of Norfolk County. Does Norfolk County, I, I've been under the understanding by other staff members that Norfolk County does not make money from taxes or development charges. In fact, our levy is like $70 million and our budget's, I don't know, whatever, $200 million. So we clearly do not make money from taxes. We're, we're always scraping for more. Is that right or wrong? I, I'll go to the county manager. Okay, go ahead. You are correct. Okay, Councilor. thank you. <laughs> Re residential development is 1.0 on the scale. You just uh, three weeks a month ago dealt with your tax rates. Uh, so residential development is aimed at recouping the cost of providing services to those residents. Your property tax pays for all the services you consume. Where we make money, if you will, are commercial is commercial and industrial that are higher multipliers of the 1.0 and those uh, pay taxes they, for services they don't consume, like the libraries for instance the industry doesn't go to the library or the swimming pool uh, but residential just pays for itself so there's no profit making to be had there or the increased income will be offset by increased costs okay thank you I appreciate that and secondly to to staff um, you know I'm not really understanding mr. Valley and his perspective because what you've said corroborates what I asked in that all subdivisions dedicate land back to Norfolk County. So all subdivisions are the same. This linkage between a piece of property that we happen to own, I, I don't get. Like it could be uh, somebody else that owns that property. So are they supposed to give it to them? So could you explain that, that linkage? I, I don't get it. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Black, um, I, get, I understand your question, Councillor Black, and you are correct. This portion of McCool Street 
is a portion of land that has value that we have had appraised and been given a value for. And on the sale of any property, money exchanges hands. If, if you look at the map that was provided with the report, um, this subdivision did extend into private property. And parts two and three on the map indicate an area where it extended. And those portions of land were also purchased by the, the applicant and the subdivider. And they were purchased for a, a value uh, substantially more than what the county is presently asking for, for that part of McCool Street. And those parcels were required in order for this subdivision to fit. So, so yes, there, there is a value to be applied. Appreciate it, thank, thank you. Councillor Wells. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I must uh, congratulate Mr. Valley. He has done an excellent uh, promotional job for his client, and I think that's his job. My question, Mr. Chair, is uh, to our staff, have we ever, to the best of your knowledge, given our land away free? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Wells, um, uh, Shelley and I are not aware of the Silver Lake development. However, I can tell you that when I started with the municipality three years ago, and when I was bringing myself up to speed on files and how the process worked and what we did, I did come across a file that is very similar to what we have here today. And it actually is in Waterford. And we reviewed that file. And there was a request then made to, for the acquisition of an unopened road allowance that passed through property that was going to be developed. The applicant's agent asked the council only sell to him the portions of the road allowance that would be required to make lots within that plan and that the remainder of the road allowance that was going to be a portion of a road within the plan he not have to pay for. That however was turned down and opposed by Public Works. Public Works was circulated and the uh, circulation came back to say that the applicant must buy all of the open road allowance and, this, and then dedicate the streets on the new plan back to the municipality. And that is in fact what happened with that file. So if I might just follow up again with staff, Mr. Chair, if we were to agree to Mr. Valley's proposal, would this then be setting a precedent that would allow other developers to come in and ask for the same thing? Through the chair to Councillor Wells, yes, that is correct, and we would require an exemption to our policy for that. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to staff, from the looks of the picture here, it looks like this road allowance is on a field. Would that be correct? To the chair to Councillor Height. Uh, yes, it is unopened, and it probably has never been a traveled road. I can tell Council that this area has been in existence since 1916. Councillor Sonnenberg did ask that question. My question specifically, though, it looks like this is an agricultural field, like as in cultivated. Would that be incorrect? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Height, I will say that I have not attended on the site, so I can't uh, answer that for you. Okay, because in light of the picture, if it's an agricultural field, I don't see a green line where it's not being used. Are we receiving rent for that property that's being grown on right now? Through the chair, no, we are not. Thank you. Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My question, I wasn't going to bother asking a question, but I will just on the concept of, of the precedent and to staff again, uh, Lydia, can you think of very many other examples where a, a dead end, unopened, undeveloped road allowance is totally contained within an area proposed for a subdivision development? Is that a common occurrence or a very uncommon occurrence? 
through the chair to Councillor Oliver. Um, I, I honestly cannot answer that for you, uh, Councillor Oliver. I, I'd have to do a lot of thinking and research to find something of that nature. Okay, and when you say that, does that mean that it's, that it's very infrequent or you just don't know? Uh, we don't know. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, Councillor Mayor Luke. Uh, just a quick question to Lydia through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm looking at my map on uh, page 13 of our agenda. Is this unopened road, the hash mark line there, is it just the south end of that that we're looking at? In other words, it doesn't extend all the way up to West Church Street, does it? Uh, through the chair to uh, Mayor Luke, McCool Street itself does extend up to West Church yeah. Street. Um, the requested area for closure is th just that section of it that's hatched in red. Yes, and I don't have any color on mine. It's the uh, diagonals. So is it fair to say that we're involving about uh, seven lots fronting onto this uh, eventual road? Um, I'm just going to... If I can just uh, clarify with Mayor Luke, are you talking about the lots that are shown on this uh, plan attached to the report? Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering, uh, clear on my mind, how far this section is, and I believe it's, it's, it's shown there as a southern portion, and I'm just wondering how many lots this affects. If, in fact, this is a plan of subdivision. For the subdivision, it would affect seven lots, and part of part of seven lots and part of two blocks on the plan of subdivision. Thank you very much. Councilor Columbus. Mr. Chairman, rather than uh, waiving county policy and setting a precedent, I will move the recommendation as printed in the report by staff. Option one. Option one, okay. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Columbus that staff report EBS 17-39 proposed closure and sale of part McCool Street unopened plan 997 B Waterford be received as information and that option one as outlined in the report be followed and further that the responsibility for all costs associated with the conveyance be borne by the property owners receiving the lands and further that any net proceeds from the sale of the property be credited to the current year operating budget as disposable of tangible capital assets and transfer it to the property management service reserve. Questions? All those in Questions? Okay. Councillor Sonnenberg. I will not be supporting the recommendation. This unopened road allowance is something that we've never used. Not any of us even knew it existed. And now we're placing a value of it of $37,000. To me, that's gouging. Let's encourage development and, and let the man get on with it and charge him $2. Thank you. Okay, I've seen a bunch of hands there. So we, can, we can see them again. Councillor Oliver. Thank you very Councilor much, Black. Mr. Chair. Uh, Councillor Sonnenberg just took the words out of my mouth. I agree with him. I don't think I can support the motion on the, on the table. I think we struggle as council trying to support and encourage development and developers. And, and yes, we have a policy that if one thinks it's the same as other circumstances, maybe there should be a value put on. The value on this unopened road allowance to me is only there if this land gets developed. And that's what Mr. Valley and his client are proposing to do. Will it go ahead even if we don't agree with this? Probably. But I, I think we as council have to start thinking and we have to encourage our staff to start thinking in terms of supporting and promoting development, not putting either large or tiny roadblocks in front of them. And while this one is tiny, it's a roadblock in my opinion. And so I can't support this motion. I would go with option, probably option three, which would be the nominal fee that I think Councillor Sonnenberg has suggested. Councillor Black. Chairman, through you, a question through you to staff. Um, 
This road is uh, cool, serves an existing registered subdivision, does it not? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Black, uh, Plan 97B is a registered plan of subdivision. Yes. Okay, so there is a purpose for this road. This, this road was laid out to provide services to all these lots that are going off, off of that. So if the developer wanted to go ahead and develop, he could use McCool Street as is and develop the existing lots. He's chosen to take in a bigger area and so he can develop more lots. And uh, I, I cannot, I understand you know, roadblocks getting in the way of development and all that, uh, rules, regulations, and policies. But then on the flip side, there's a protection of the interests of the taxpayers. And the taxpayers own this property. So to give things away free, I don't think that uh, we, we do that. Who gives anything away free? I don't think anybody does. So um, the developer will continue to develop this, and this developer will make money. He'll make good money. So I'm supporting the, the uh, motion that's on the floor. Um, I think it was, Council, was it Councillor Columbus that uh, moved it. So I support your motion. Councillor Columbus. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We're talking $1.3 million in development fees. The potential to have half a million dollars worth of taxes for these houses for this development every single year. This little piece of land that we've never used, it's probably being used right now for crops, is holding up a development. Really, for a return on investment for taxpayers is we get rid of this piece of property for $2.00 let the development continue, and add them to our Christmas card list. Thank you very much. Councillor Columbus. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to hear from uh, Ms. Robinson with respect to the status of this road and the proposed development. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Through the Chairman to Council. Um, further to some of the comments that Council has made, there is water main located through this right-of-way. It's not a piece of property that we didn't know about. We actually have infrastructure through that area. Um, we worked with the developer to come up with an, a solution so that that infrastructure will be rerouted and changes will be made to the infrastructure. So that right-of-way is currently serving, serving a purpose. Um, it, it's the reason that we still own the property because we have been using it for our utilities um, and for other municipal purposes through that area. Um, again, we worked very well with the development community and we were most certainly able to come up with a solution that worked with everybody and Public Works has no opposition to it. But I just wanted to make sure that Council was well aware of the fact that this particular right-of-way does serve a municipal purpose as it is, although there may not be any surface features to the right-of-way, it does have an underground purpose. So we have been using it, and we have been using it for a very long period of time from an underground point of view. Um, but again, uh, Public Works is not objecting to the sale of this. Um, right of way because we've been able to work out an amicable agreement with the development community for how to address um, the fact that the infrastructure is currently located in the right of way. Thank you for that. Mayor Luke. Perhaps a question, uh, well, yeah, I will pose a question through you if I may Go ahead. to Lee Robinson. Lee, is this a standard street width, this unopened uh, street? And I know this map, it's very hard for me to really, I mean, it's not a difficult map, but it's, it's do you know, uh, do you know, Lee, if this is a standard street? It's Through the chairman to council, um, it is undersized. It is an undersized right of way. A typical right of way width would be approximately 20 meters, and this one's a, in the area that we're discussing is about 13 and a half. It, it is a much wider, it is wider further to the north, but through the area that we're discussing, it's approximately 13 and a half meters wide. Mr. Chair, there are um, compelling arguments, in my opinion, on both sides of this equation or this motion, if you will. Um, you know, and, I, and in the difficulty I'm having in supporting the motion is if this was, is a registered road, and I know it's unopened, but if it was put in somewhere in the past as a future road, then as far as I'm concerned, even though it's not developed to date as a road, 
it would seem to me that that's what it's going to be used for. It's not the county that's going to invest the money in developing this. It's going to be the developer, I assume, taking over a road that was designated and registered at one time in a former municipality, no doubt, as, as a future road. Thank you. Further questions? If not, I have a motion on the floor that we have to deal with, so I'm going to take the question. All those in favor? One, two, three, four. Those opposed? I, uh oh. <laughs> I am uh, voting with the uh, with the motion. Thank you. So it continues. Moving on. Moving on. Hang on a second here. Let my guest let me get back into uh, Juliana Q. Chalk. Have I got that right? I hope I have it. Chalky. Chalky. Sorry. <laughs> you can straighten me out on that. <laughs> you have uh, 10 minutes. And I'll let you know when you're down to one minute. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Council, audience at home, and everyone here. I'm going to speak very briefly, and then I'm going to turn everyone to southcoastjazz.com to watch a video that sums up everything. We've been here before. My name is Julianne Kachaki. We are going into the fourth annual of South Coast Jazz, Norfolk County's official premier festival, voted in last year unanimously by Council. Thank you again. We are a major economic development for the area, and we are here today to ask for some things, but we are going to give back 99% more of what we're actually asking for to the community. South Coast Jazz makes a lot of money for Norfolk County, and we are supporting and promoting uh, development by what we're doing. We've been talking about that a lot today, so I just wanted to put that out there first. Wanted to start off with a quick update. We've been supported by the government. I'm very happy to announce that we have some new stages this year on Harbor Street shut down. We are on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, August 18th, 19th, and 20th this year. We are also introducing some vendors, catered food, so you'll be able to enjoy pairings with music, food, and the wine and beer, and local wine and beer as well. So we'll have some great culture coming to the area with Afro-Cuban, New Orleans, and soul. We have funk and R&B. We have all sorts of music, a lot of Canada 150 enhancements, including Lucas Wilson. We have a Susan Lobier exhibit with one of our new locations at the Norfolk Arts Centre, as well as the Port Dover Community Centre and Arena. I'm here today to ask for a few things. Um, through, through South Coast Jazz, we need some municipal significance. We are looking for our fees to be waived as they have in the past. We're a community development. We offer entertainment for all ages, and we offer back about $400,000 at least, uh, just with the one, about between $200,000 and $400,000 back into the economy per event so far that we've tracked. And we're here uh, asking today for the fees to be waived for the community centre and the arena, which have been in the past, and any additional funding that Norfolk County can provide. We're also here to talk about signage. As we are Norfolk County's official premier festival, we'd like to get some signs so that people know that we're on the third weekend of August in these locations. I'm going to refer you to uh, southcoastjazz.com and... Let everyone know that we are on sale August 18th, 19th, and 20th, and we'll also be having a presence in the July 1st float with some live music. But I'm going to take you to the homepage, video, and for the rest of my time, this will give you some highlights from the last three years and why we're here. Can you? Yes. Can we go to the video? Okay, let's stop it. <laughs> Let's go to video, <laughs> home, and then down the video. No, at the top, on the top left-hand side, yeah. and see video. It's hard to see. Can we dim the lights? Is it possible to, to dim the lights? Video. Uh, yeah, the, the first one. Um, no, hold on. Let's just wait to the... I can't see. The first one. It should have Mayor Luke, a picture of Mayor Luke. Is it not showing up? This is, the, this is one we want to watch, the first one. 
No, there should be a picture showing up. If the, the website nope. is, is we're, blocked. We're going to go up higher? I'm not sure why it would be blocked. Um, it, it's blocked probably through our IT. We didn't know that going in? No, I'm not aware. No. Okay, because I, I did specifically ask if we could use your... Is there any way to unblock that? Okay. Well, that's extremely disappointing. Is there no other way that we can watch this? Like if I did it on my phone, is there a way to? I did inquire previously if we could actually go through these means. Just uh, the clerk has said if you want that we can just, uh, uh, I guess, uh, cut your uh, deputation and look and see if we can fix it and come back. If that's something you would like or not. If that's an option, yes, please. I can't tell you just exactly what it'll be, but we can certainly try to make it work. I think it's pretty important because we've been going for about three years now. We're going into our fourth annual. The video is a professionally done video, and it highlights everything that we're about. So we will try. If we don't get anywhere, we can still go back to where we were before, if that's okay with you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move, keep moving on. Debbie Pike and David uh, Thierolt, and I hope I've said that correctly, Accessibility Inclusion Official Plan. Please come to the uh, podium. You have 10 minutes. So thank you for letting me use your mic. Uh, as chair and vice chair of Nor Norfolk County's Accessibility Advisory Committee, we are here to advise and assist council as per the community mandate. We are here to address the motion put forward by Councilor Brunton to modify wording in section 8.2.2.5.C of Norfolk County's official plan to outline that sidewalks may generally require, be required on one side of localized roads. Norfolk County needs to ensure that we are creating a pedestrian network throughout our community that does not create barriers to exclude participation of people with disabilities with respect to sidewalks or the lack thereof. Sidewalks are an essential piece of infrastructure. They create inclusion and improve accessibility for persons with disabilities. They provide independence, integ integration, and equal opportunity. Sidewalks support diverse needs of people of all ages and abilities. Citizens should not be required to walk on the roadway, regardless of it being a quiet street or having lesser volume of traffic, any more than a person who uses a mobility device or a person who is blind and uses a guide dog or a white cane. There are sidewalk se sections within the county that are missing stretches and therefore lack connectivity. These missing linkages must be addressed as a priority to ensure functional and connected sidewalk system. The fact that new or existing development homeowners, groups, or area residents do not wish to have a sidewalk across the public, public easement at their property should not exclude the benefits to others or its future legacy. Sidewalks should be included in development, be it new or redeveloped. Exterior paths of travel have technical requirements outlined under the Designs of Public Spaces Standard under the Integrated Accessibility Standards Regulation. Inclusive design that will facilitate social inclusion for years to come. Sidewalks connect people to their communities and give them opportunities to explore play, shop, and work. When leaving their homes, everyone relies on these paths to take them to, to everything our communities have to offer. Making sure these paths of travel are safe and accessible to everyone will benefit people living in and visiting Norfolk County, as well as businesses and com communities. That, that's all I have. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, David. Great job. And uh, 
Your silent partner there did a great job as, as well. <laughs> and, and just wondering, you're, you are responding to uh, a change, I guess, that this council voted on. Uh, just a simple word. May from shall I think our policy was shall include sidewalks and all subdiv all subdivisions, and it was changed to may, and that's what you're concerned about. Yes, is that one little change there? That, that one change. And you would like to have that word go back to shall rather than may. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Further questions? I have none. So oh, I guess thank you very much for your deputation. I need someone to move it. Councillor uh, Black, all those in favor? That is carried. <clears throat> Councillor Black. I know, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I just wondered, uh, how can we, is there a what method to address the deputation's concern? I know, I guess we've already voted on this, but I don't know if it was at council or whether procedurally, what would it require? Does it require a... Uh, reconsideration. Uh, I can't remember if it was at a council meeting or. Is it? Well, <clears throat> probably reconsideration. I guess is something, but that will take a, uh, a council Two -thirds. meeting. I would suggest. Yep. So, <coughs> so we're trying to figure it out right now. So it'll give us a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. If we are going to reconsider, what are we going to reconsider? The word change. The, the change from may to we shall. And on one particular item or all items? Or? I would suggest that would be all the new subdivisions that are going in. That's my understanding. Am I correct, Councilor Black? Or? Yeah. Well, at, I, th I think it was at the planning meeting where this council, the majority, did. Uh, want to change the one word it, it was had to do with our sidewalk policy and any new subdivisions um, shall have sidewalks in them and it was changed by this council to may and the deputation is asking for that to be go back to shall versus may well mr chair did we not in somewhere in delhi i believe we changed our mind and did not want a sidewalk there is this what is this what prompted this deputation i'm not i they, me i have no idea but there there was a none of them wanted sidewalks or something like that so i'm not sure anyway councillor luke or mayor luke sorry. it's all right <laughs> mr chair if i may i know we're getting to the official plan review but on page 285 of our agenda and i believe this is what uh, we we're talking about on 285 or agenda under uh, section 8-2-2-5 section C sidewalks shall generally be required has been changed or proposed to be changed to May 285 of our agenda which is 205 of the official plan <clears throat> that we're working on so that's what this deputation I believe is about um, was uh, this council's suggestion to staff that we change sidewalks shall generally be required to sidewalks may. Thank you. Okay. Just, to, you just to answer Council Walls. Thank you, you Shelby. I appreciate that. I'm not usually right. Find yourselves. All right. Okay. We can redo that. I've just been told because this was done in committee, not in, uh, in council. So theoretically, if somebody wants to put a motion on the floor, you can do so. Okay, Council Black. Since I am Council's representative on the Advisory Accessibility Committee, I think it would be incumbent upon me to uh, go along with the uh, request of the committee and the deputation here today and uh, try a motion that would take it back to the word shall. So change it from May to shall. Are you making that a motion? Yes, I am. Questions or comments from anyone? Councillor Oliver? Mr. Chair, the, uh, the next deputation we have is on the exact same matter, I think, so I wonder if we could defer making a decision on this until we hear from the other deputation. 
I suppose we can. I don't have a problem with it. We'll see yeah. as yeah. long as it's going to deal with the same situation. That's yeah, the only other problem. I think it does. It does? Okay. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, Thank Frank you. Woodcock, Pathways for People. Please come forward. Yes. Well, we're going to deal with this one separately. We're going to see what happens if it's the same thing. It's, thank you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Chair, Mayor, and Council. Uh, my name is Frank Woodcock. I'm with the uh, Norfolk Pathways for People. We're a um, community group um, working with the Haldeman and Norfolk uh, Health Unit for new and improved trails and pathways in Norfolk County. Uh, Pathways for People and the Norfolk County Active Transportation Strategy that was passed by Council envisions subdivisions and communities connected by pathways leading to network of linkages in the greater community. On November 1st, 1st 2016, I stood here on behalf of Pathways uh, speaking in support of the Norfolk County Active Transportation Strategy. That night, as per Resolution 20, councillors accepted this document, its report PW16-81. Integrated Sustainable and Active Transportation Master Plans completion was received for information, and further, that the Integrated Sustainable and Active Transportation Master Plans be incorporated into the official plan update and future strategic plan reviews. As I say, that was passed. On page... 39 of my copy of the approved transportation strategy, item 4.1.6, prioritizing sidewalk improvements. It says, where possible, the county should aim to have sidewalks on both sides of roadways for routes that make up the designated active transportation network. And priority should be given to the designated active transportation routes where no sidewalks currently exist within the walkable area of the local school to establish a more connected pedestrian system. And one of the priorities of the strategy is providing youth with direct access to school through active and safe routes. The, those students who live within 1.6K of a school are considered able to use an alternative mode of transportation and are not identified as candidates for busing. As such, proposed active transportation routes where no sidewalks currently exist within 1.6 kilometers of the school should be considered a priority for the county. Lastly, the county should review and revise their site plan and development approvals process to reflect the development of active transportation linkages. New development areas should provide direct connectness, connections to the active transportation network where feasible and should be implemented in the early stages of development. This was passed unanimously by Council. Pathways for People rejoiced. Pathways for People, who work closely with Triple M consultants on the active transportation strategy, recently found that on May 18th, Council decided to change shall to may in section 8.2.2.5c of the official plan, which uh, um, Mayor Luke read. And I'll repeat it. Sidewalks shall generally be required on one side of local roads. Norfolk County has gone from shall to May, and Pathways with People to, would like to go on record as advising Council um, to the contrary, for many reasons, including liability. I've included in my deputation local OPP pedestrian collision statistics, and you can see that on, in 2012 it was 2, 13, 2, 14, 3, 15, 10, and, and 16, 5 pedestrian collisions. When county plans call for the removal of one or two sidewalks um, on Bellevue, the residents told council they wanted two sidewalks. They received two sidewalks. So why do people like sidewalks so much? The sidewalk appeared in urban areas to separate pedestrians from mud and horses and horse droppings. Without any rules of the road in place, cars appeared, and there was even more reason to separate pedestrians from horseless carriages. And then the car became precious and needed its own housing. At first, garages were separate from the house, but as time passed, garages became important, and now they're prominently featured at the front of a home. 
In the day of the separate garage, urban areas had sidewalks for safe passage, and these pathways through town were regularly used for errands to get to school, church, doctor, dentist, grocery, or the arena. It was also used on cool nights for strolls and for catching up with neighbors. In this era, people didn't ask not to have sidewalks because to them, the reason was self-evident. Come to think of it, once people had sidewalks, they didn't ask to have them to be removed. And I believe to this day, people don't make delegations to council to have their sidewalks removed. And I believe there are few or no deputations asking for a fire hydrant to be removed. It's a safety issue. Why aren't sidewalks treated like fire hydrants, storm sewers, and stop signs? The Office of the Chief Coroner of Ontario's Pedestrian Death Review made many recommendations. Number 19 states that municipalities, in developing their complete streets approach to pedestrians, should consider strategies to prevent collisions occurring where pedestrians are walking along the road. Some of these strategies might include developing new communities that provide sidewalks. I live in Simcoe on a hill where Tyrrell meets Bellevue. From my front stoop, I look south down Bellevue, past the circle, past the community mailbox on the right, past Upper Union Street on the left, down to Foster. To the east, Tyrrell Street drops down to King. The surrounding streets were made for vehicle traffic, not pedestrian traffic. The houses were built in the 50s and 60s, so they have either no garage or a one-car garage, either separate or adjoined. For various reasons, cars park on the street. There are no sidewalks. This is 2017, and in our neighborhood, seniors walk to the community mailbox, students walk to school, joggers jog, dog walkers walk, bikers bike, and this all takes place on the road with parks, cars, and no sidewalks. The reformer is delivered on foot, and the other papers are, are, are delivered via a toss from a passing car. We're within walking distance of an ice cream shop, medical clinic, hospital, nursing home, physiotherapy, church, groceries, library, town hall, and arena. When the community mailbox appeared, it became a meeting place where to catch up with neighbors, greet new ones, and of course, post and receive mail. There's no sidewalk, and so in our case, as per Canada Post preference, the box faces the street where people park for their mail. The mailbox box is accessible to those with physical challenges and therefore set back from the street enough to allow a wheelchair to maneuver. Three houses down, a young man uses a mobility device to get around. So with no sidewalks, he uses the street and negotiates the Bellevue Tyrrell corner. At the Tyrrell Bellevue corner, the yield sign was replaced by a stop sign. But not everyone updated. It's a speedy curve both ways and often used as a shortcut from cedar to west or vice versa. My physically challenged neighbor shares that curve with traffic. The retired couple across the road walk down the street each day to abreast. The cyclist on Union uses Tyrrell as a training hill. Cyclists use the route from the 8th down Evergreen, Oak, Bellevue and head north and west via Park Road. A group of women joggers run up and down the hill weekly. I've seen skateboarders surf the hill, an 18-wheeler make a delivery, and another transport heading for Briars was misled by his GPS and headed down Upper Union, only to find that a dead street, and then he had to reverse back out onto Bellevue. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it snows. In the morning, joggers are exercising, dog walkers are walking, mums with children in strollers are needing a change of scene, school children within 1.6 kilometers of Elgin, Trinity, and Simcoe Comps have to their backpacks. People are heading to work. Senior support services deliver a meal. Canada Post van delivers the mail. People park to get their mail. And a regular-sized school bus and an accessible school bus arrive. It's garbage day. The recycling truck, followed by the garbage truck, chug up the hill. Leon's is delivering. Someone has a lawn service. Someone is speeding. Someone's lost their cable. Our newspaper carrier crisscrosses the road. Snow plow, street sweeper, and an electric mobility device are all sharing the road. I ask... Why encourage a pedestrian accident? I'm not a lawyer, but if a municipality had a shall sidewalk policy and then turned it into a may sidewalk policy, while at the same time accepting a costly active transportation strategy from a 
consulting company that does active transportation work throughout the province, I'm asking, would that create a due diligence issue? If the municipality approved an active transportation strategy that included sidewalks in every new development and sidewalks for those within the Board of Education's 1.6 transportation policy, and then knowingly reverse that decision, I'm asking, would that be a liability issue? You have one minute, sir. I'm done. Let's build safety into every community with shall, a shall sidewalk policy. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Columbus. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, Frank, for coming forward with your deputation. I've got a question with respect to this chart, um, page two of your report, pedestrian collisions. just wonder, are all those in an urban area or are some of those personal injuries pedestrians and fatals in, in a country atmosphere, um, environment? I'm not able to answer that. This uh, came through to me this, uh, this morning from the OPP, so I didn't get the question. Like, I know there was two fatal pedestrians, one on Ireland Road and one on the 24 Highway last uh, 2015 it is, I guess. So I just wondered if that was the only two that are noted on this chart or whether this is in an urban area versus throughout the county. I can't say, but I would suspect it would be those two since they're here. Okay, thank you. Uh, just before uh, you leave, um, I'd like to thank you for coming to Waterford to the uh, Black Bridge as host of the um, uh, Amazing Places tour. I think you enjoyed the bridge, and down below was that walkway that we paved, which, by, t by the way, today we've paved right up to the, um, uh, on Golden Pond. And so, as you saw, that was a well-used pathway. All we did was build it, and they came. Mayor Luke and I much. enjoyed the day, thank you. Anything further? If not, thank you very much. I need a, a movement, uh, someone to move the, that the deputation be received as information. Councillor Oliver, all those in favor? Now getting back to Councillor Black's motion to change from may to shall, is that correct, Councillor Black? I don't know if you want to be a little bit more specific and then cite the, the actual section in the uh, okay. plan there. Shall do. It's Go ahead. Uh, 280, page 285, section 8.2.2.5, local roads, and it's <coughs> C. The clerk's going to read it. She's got it. Okay. I figured she would anyway, so <laughs> she's good. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, through the chair to committee in that section 8.2.2.5 local roads subsection C sidewalks may be returned to shall generally be required on one side of local roads. Go ahead. I, I don't think I can speak to this any better than our last deputation. Uh, Mr. Woodcock, I think, just uh, made it abundantly clear why it should be shall versus may, but I do have a question. He asked something about liability and what our liability exposure might be. You know, adopting one master plan and then changing something else. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, to staff, and I don't know if Candy's department or Shelley could answer that. It's probably a liability issue. Is it possible to answer Maybe Mr. Or, Woodcock's uh, question about, uh, you know, adopting one and then changing another later on? <laughs> we don't seem nope. to have an answer. Okay. How about the county manager? <coughs> Design principle uh, is one of many factors Urban design is one of many factors that go into an analysis of a personal injury case on public highways. Uh, weather conditions, maintenance, urban design, these are all basis of allegations for negligence. Uh, beyond that, <coughs> the factors in the case at hand and the specifics are uh, dictate the rest of the outcome, but those are things that are considered in a standard analysis leading up to a determination of where, whether or not liability accrues to the road authority. I don't see any more hands. You've 
Councillor Sonnenberg, Councillor Mike, Councillor Cumbus, and Councillor, see the hand up here, Brunton? No? Or, oh, yeah, no, it's, okay, go ahead. I'll leave well, you. Um, I guess I did make the motion to May, and I did that simply because 